first of all, I'd like to apologize for two things. One, uh, the presentation is no more about what it says here. Um, we'll see where it ends up. That's one. Number two, just so you know it, uh, I'm coming out. I'm not a practitioner anymore. Um, so my role is I am GM, General Manager for Smart Bear here in Sweden, meaning uh, I've go gone from being a, a, a practitioner, somebody who knows his craft, to somebody who just talks about it. Um, I would like to start. Hello, Matti. In the year of 1999. Uh, so, in 1999, uh, I wrote my master's thesis based on, on two previous years of work in my company. And the thesis had the idea that in the future, all companies will expose the services and uh, goods they provide as methods on their websites. So you call the method on the website, and back you got an XML document with what you asked for. Um, and the idea was also, we thought that in the future, somebody would take one XML document from one company and another XML document from another company and put them together and create increased value. Um, the, uh, my master's thesis did not get approved because they call it science fiction, not science. Uh, <laughs> so really, what I'm, I'm not trying to brag here. I'm just trying to say that I've, I've been in APIs since 97, and I've done every bad mistake you can make. Um, so it's kind of funny that I'm talking about performance testing, because if somebody was around in 99 when the yellow pages went down for a month because of bad performance, bad API performance actually, that was me. <laughs> If somebody remember 2001 when Telia.se got hacked uh, through a huge denial of service attack, that was me. <laughs> Actually, I was just uh, I was just trying to uh, beta test our performance testing tool, and I pointed it to Telia.se. <laughs> uh, but ever since then. I've been fascinated by uh, performance. Um, so, hands up. How many performance testers in the audience? Wow. That's like one of 30 in Stockholm, right? No, I'm just a part-time. Oh, okay. Because there are not that many of you. How many testers? Okay. So, I I'm, I'm directing this to you. You are going to hate what I'm talking about today. But uh, you have to. <laughs> so, because what I'm going to show you is something you should never, ever try at home. Uh, this, I'm not going to show you. I'm going to show you something you really shouldn't do. Uh, I'm not going to talk about performance testing. I'm going to talk about better than nothing performance testing. Because we all know and I, th I think we've all been there. We have a project, uh, it's running short, maybe we have time for tests, but we never have time for performance tests because it's time consuming and it's complex. So when you have no time, because it's, it's quite common, and when you have no resources, uh, what do you do? Well, I am going to show you a model that I use where you, uh, Spend time to save time. Because performance testing is time consuming and it's very complex. So uh, I have a model that you should not try at home that uh, helps you choose what to focus on. So what we have to do is basically we have to come up with a model for creating substandard performance tests. But that helps us a bit at least. So that's why you're not going to like this. Um, so, are you the rest of you? So we had one performance tester, one uh, 
no normal testers, and the rest of you are developers? Yep. Okay. So, developers, what's the most common reason for API performance issues? What do you think? Okay, it's you guys. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and of course, it's not you guys, it's us people. Because uh, APIs uh, in themselves is a pretty robust technology, right? I mean, we're building it on stuff that has been around forever and ever. So the technologies themselves aren't that complicated. Um, what still we haven't found a solution to is us human beings. We make mistakes. So um, what I'm going to show you now is a process where we try to figure out where human error will occur. Um, OK, and as you know, I come from SmartBear. We're tools people. And of course, I can't be here without uh, trying to show you great tools. And here comes the first tool you have to use. The mind map. I love mind maps. Why? Because they're stupid, they're simple, they're crude, and they're robust. There is no wrong way to use a mind map. Um, so this is my mind map. This is the model I'm using when I'm trying to figure out performance issues uh, in the team. But you could create your own. But the point is having a way to go through the context of the API. Trying to figure out stuff around the API that actually might cause us problems. Um, Okay, I, I'm going to, uh, this was planned to be secret, but I'm going to tell you it anyways. So what I'm going to show you now is not something I've invented. It's a common testing technique. Um, and maybe you who are a tester know what I'm talking about. This is, and you've all, probably already heard it, all of you, and probably used it several times, but wrong. This is exploratory testing. So, see this is an extra course in exploratory testing. Let's get started. The first thing I look at is the stuff that happened before the project got started. Um, is there a clear mission statement? And mission statements are important because that's how the team knows what they're supposed to deliver. Uh, as a performance testers, I love proof of concepts because, you know, as you all, we all know, devil is in the details and in the proof of concepts here where you find the Devil. Um, is there a b clear business plan? Is there a clear traffic estimation? Because that's usually what uh, kills an API or, or anything, is you haven't done a clear traffic estimation. So do we have all traffic spread over day? Are there certain periods of the day where it's going to be extra high, how will the uh, additional traffic occur? Will it just go like this? Will it ramp up slowly over time? Or do we have ups and downs? Because that can affect the system a lot. And um, I'm going to show you uh, some uh, uh, slides from a, from a real case here. As you can see, it's a, it's a beautiful mind map. Um, so when I looked at in this specific case, when I did the pre-work study, I realized that the 25th to 27th each month, you had seven times higher traffic than on a normal day. And between nine and three, you had five times higher than the rest of the same day. Meaning between the 25th and the 27th, nine to 11, we had crap loads of traffic. Mm, almost, almost. Let's see if we can figure out, oh, it's going to be very clear what it is later. But something happens the 25th here in Sweden. 
Um, but good guess. Um, the means, I mean, we have to be able to scale up to that kind of, uh, of traffic. We have to be prepared for that kind of traffic. We probably have to have a bunch of service that does nothing most of the month. I also have one more interesting thing. That was that there was one resource that sometimes delivered huge results back. Then we look at the people in the team and trying to figure out how it's composed. Uh, is there a clear product owner? How is the team, have they worked in the specific domain before? Have they worked with APIs before? Uh, was there uh, a learning curve for the team members uh, in the project? And, and here, and I'm gonna say this a couple of times, you, often you want something in between. You, you don't want super new people to the domain or APIs, because then they're bound to make mistakes. You don't want super <laughs> who's been around forever because they're bound to be make mistakes as well because, well, you tend to get lazy over time and you want something in between. Uh, and in this specific case, it was the ghost. And you've probably been with the ghost, all of you, before. There was a, a product owner who was super skilled in the domain itself, but she wasn't there. First of all, she wasn't a product owner. She, she was uh, working in the industry, uh, but she had no product owner knowledge. And then secondly, she wasn't there, which for me means that if she's not there, how does the team know what to do? Um, otherwise, I, I actually, in this case, liked the team a lot. Uh, good people, good skills. Um, they knew what they were doing. Here's something also I would like to point out with mind maps. It doesn't matter if you do wrong. Here in, in the team section, I actually uh, brought in technology stuff and uh, said that they're using web sphere. I'm scared. Uh, then you look at the project. How was the project performed? Uh, did we have a lot of time in the project? Was there a period when, uh, when the project seemed shaky? Was it under pressure? Was there good communication be between the product owner and the team? And what I found was that it was pretty good. In general, it was pretty good. It was a, 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 an extremely uh, successful project until two thirds in, when um, the company itself had to upgrade WebSphere because support was running out. So they upgrade in the middle of the project. They had to upgrade the platform, and then. Uh, after that, they had uh, very little time to finish it. Um, which meant that for me, I had to look at the stuff uh, the team made after they've upgraded because they were under time pressure. Then I look at what I call the system, which is, you know, the software part. Um, are we using cutting edge technologies, which for me means performance issues. Uh, are we using uh, legacy technologies, which for me means integration issues? Are we, um, um, basically, are we trying something new? Are we, um, do we know what we're doing? I also, a good uh, trick for performance testers also, looking uh, at the code. Basically, code age is of, of super importance. Because if this system hasn't been out in the market before, it's nobody's used it. It's bound to be full of bugs and performance issues because no users has found them for us yet. Uh, if it's a legacy system, it probably is pretty stable because it's been around for a long time. We might hate it for a lot of different reasons, but as a performance tester, I know that a legacy system usually works. 
But same thing there, if the, you've done something new on top of the uh, legacy system, there's probably integration issues which slow down performance. Here's what I came up with. Um, I also divide the resources into main resources, the important ones, the uh, supporting resources and the less important resources. Because when you're out of time, you probably have to focus on the important ones. So I found two uh, main re resources called score and history. Um, and they just had to work. Basically, in the entire system was those two resources. There was a number of supporting resources, but um, I didn't see how they would be used. So meaning, when I had little time, I would just focus on testing uh, those two main resources and then uh, hope for the best with the rest. Infrastructure, classic. How is it set up? Uh, do, have we scaled enough? Do we have uh, failovers? Something, as a performance tester, I think a lot about is, and it's not an official term, distance to database. Uh, so how close to the system itself is the database? Uh, is it on a net, another network? Are there uh, firewalls and items in between? Because I know there's going to be problems. I also, quite honestly, the first thing I do is I always look at the database. Because if I joked around when I said that uh, people are the problem, it's not quite true. It's usually the database. And here I'm speaking as, as a performance tester. If you don't have a flattened database, which is made just for exposing the APIs, I know there's going to be problems. I know there's other reasons why you don't want it, but I want a read-only database for performance reasons. Uh, in this specific case, it was the opposite. The system uh, was reading from the same database that uh, customer support was using. That was also used for uh, um, invoicing stuff, because it was the, the uh, ledger system. And of course, that was a super red flag for me. Because I knew, like it says over here somewhere, they were actually doing uh, old school batch jobs every night at 12 o'clock. Uh, also uh, found this. There was a dependency on a third-party API, which, and here, here we know what it is, for third-party loans in other banks. And while that API was extremely dependable, it varied a lot in, in response times, which me may, meant our system had to support uh, very different response times. Then I look at testing maturity in the organization. Um, do you guys do tests, is basically the question. And, and I have levels of maturity. So first is we do unit tests, um, which of course as a tester, I consider that not testing, that is checking. And then if you use unit tests in a, in a TDD approach, uh, good. If you're doing uh, BDD, even better. If you're doing proper functional tests, negative tests, data-driven tests, fantastic. Uh, and what I found, which scared the living daylights out of me, was basically the situation here in the room. There were no testers. And uh, the team actually said, we don't need testers, we're agile. Which scared me even more. Um, here's something I loved. There actually was some SOAP UI tests in the project. They were a bit simple for me, but there were uh, uh, some SOAP UI tests. And the reason why that's important is because if you've done functional testing, uh, I know that you will have less functional bugs that gets in the way of my performance testing. And then we end up with risk 
which is basically what am I going to focus on. Um, and this is what I came up with. So it's about looking at the, the two resources, looking at the database, looking at uh, the external API. I knew I probably would find a lot of functional problems that would get in the way for my performance testing. Uh, but that was it. And, and this, I don't know, do you think this looks like a positive or a negative uh, start? For me, this was quite positive, because I thought the team was stable. It's just, just a few of the standard problems. Um, and here was the overall uh, mind map. So the, state, the, the steps again, pre-work, team, project, system, infrastructure, testing, and risk. Now let's move over to the, um, the, the, the um, um, testing itself. So, as a performance tester, there are two difficult things that we have to solve. Uh, one, I want a controllable environment. Because as a performance tester, you want to trust your data. That's, that's all what it's about, trusting your data. And in order to do that, you have to have a controllable environment. Preferably, an exact copy of the live environment. I've never had that, but that's what you strive for. That's the holy grail. Second one, and this is really important and, and more uh, possible, third party is isolation. Because if there's a lot of third party dependencies, I cannot trust my data because it's the performance issues, are they in my system or are they in an external system? So isolation is very important. Tool number two, the notebook. Um, and those are the only two tools you have to learn. The notebook and the uh, mind map. And the reason why we use the notebook is because performance testing is science. You formulate a theory. I think that the database is going to crash 11 o'clock. And then you, 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 you verify it or falsify it. So you write down your theory write down your experiment, and write down your ex observations. First thing we start with, baseline test. That is, use a simple functional test of one or two resources, very simple, that you just run under normal load. Same thing there. Write down your observations. How does the system work under normal circumstances? What kind of behaviors can I see? And once you realize how it looks when it's healthy, it's time to look uh, at the system when it's not doing quite as well. So, pound away. Just make the system break. Same thing there, uh, observe and write. And it's, uh, performance testers hate this, because you're not supposed to do this. Because it doesn't, it doesn't provide any value, we just broke it. And, uh, no real circumstances, no useful data. But it's useful because we, we can observe how it looks when it starts to break. Is there something that starts uh, swaying beforehand? Is there something that shows suspicious behavior before we actually get the crash? Because if we can find that, we can find indications of a system that is about to fail. Step three, the isolation. We do have to do isolation because otherwise, <sighs> It's going to be so hard trying to figure out what the uh, results actually mean. So whatever you do, really try to isolate the system you're testing. All third party dependence, especially on APIs, try to get, move away from them. Also, you know, the first step, test we wrote the baseline test, <coughs> put that in your CI environment and run it with every build. It doesn't have to be complicated. But the, the important thing here is that we get performance as part of the, the everyday process. Step four, go to sleep. No, uh, when you're away, make your tests work for you. And it's, it's not very complicated. Just put up a load test when you go home uh, for the day and let it run through the night. Put up a test when you go home for the weekend and let it run through the weekend. 
it's pre it's pretty certain that you're going to find issues in the system when you do that, even if you've done good profiling and everything beforehand. Because it's just stuff that happens. Then we come to step five, which is actually the big step. It's the, the uh, implementing the test strategy. And what we should do here, first of all, all the time, attack the database. Because you are going to find issues there. I, 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 I can't see how you cannot. Uh, but then focus, like you know, the, the stuff I saw, showed you in the last uh, slides. Start picking apart one thing at a time that you think needs to be looked at. And in my specific case, it was the database. And of course, no problem at all. I made it crash. Customer service hated me. But at least we found uh, an issue, something that we had to fix. Um, then lo look through it. Look through um, the main resources. Try to start easy by just doing the baseline test, expand it to uh, you know, using multiple resources at the same time, preferably some resources that are very dissimilar. Uh, yeah, if there is multiple methods, absolutely use that as well. Step six, because what we've been doing so far is pretty predictable. It's predictable behavior. Uh, and of course, users are never predictable. So it's time to bring in the un unpredictable. And the unpredictable is introduced variants, different response time from different parts of the system, different behaviors from different parts of the systems. And finally, introduce ultra variants. That is, let's bring in somebody, a person who is totally irresponsible, have no impulse control, doesn't know technology for jack, and is totally destructive. Your manager. Actually, one of the best performance testers in the world is if you can set up tests so the managers can drive them by hand, because he or she will break your system. I guarantee it. So do your classic gorilla testing with a real life gorilla. Uh, going through it again, baseline test, pound away, isolate, long running test, test strategy, introduce variants, and gorilla test. But it's quite not over yet. So let's move through the very end quickly. Let's use, reuse the functional tests, put them as monitors. There are a few vendors here who, who would love you to do that. Uh, so put them as monitors after a post release and make sure you monitor your uh, APIs for performance forever and ever and ever and ever. And time it so it monitors it super frequently. Um, a lot of people complain and say, well, then I'm going to affect performance of my APIs. Well, if your API can't take that kind of pressure, we have problems. Also, look at the reports from the monitors because uh, there will be stuff there that will help you. Uh, also put monitors on the inside, monitor system resources for performance issues. And, and probably when you've done your test, you've noticed behaviors that uh, is a warning that something is going to go wrong. Uh, set up monitors for that kind of stuff. Also, blast from the past, if somebody was around in the 80s, BCP, Business Continuity Process. <laughs> Who do we report to when things go wrong? How do we get a team together to fix performance issues live straight away? Uh, and that's basically it. There was a lot of stuff. I ran out of time. Uh, but what I would like you to take home, this is just one thing. How many here does performance tests? Ooh, pretty good. Because uh, that's, that's it. It doesn't matter how much you do, how well you do, but at least I want you guys to... Do it. Do it. Thank you.